spirit is able to outwit the Wranglers and freeze the herd, but in doing so, he himself gets caught. The filmmaker's journey to bring spirit to life began over four years ago with a decision to make a different kind of animated film, an unprecedented blending of hand-drawn animation with 3D computer animation, creating the most technically complex animated movie made to date. This is, as far as I'm concerned, a redesign, a rebuild, and a reinvention of traditional animation. The goal for this movie was to create a film that uses what is unique about traditional animation, but creates a world and an environment that audiences now expect and have seen in 3D movies. And I believe that marrying the best of those two worlds together will create a new kind of animation. It's not traditional anymore. It's not digital. So I've been calling it Tradigital. <laughs> The, the tools and technologies developed for Spirit are some of the most advanced that have ever been created for animated filmmaking. So now we have very powerful machines in the hands of animators, and the result of that you will see in Spirit. Spirit's homeland is revealed in a breathtaking, groundbreaking opening sequence. A single, continuous, three-minute shot that redefines the artistic and technical capabilities of animation. From a technical standpoint, it's got it all. The camera going through those canyons and over that river and flying with that eagle, things that were virtually impossible before we were able to do that. It is everything that can be done in animation. We actually spent almost nine months just designing the camera move for the shop. There's no cuts, nothing to, to bring you out of that world where we fly through all of the, the major landmarks and uh, places of nature within the Wild West. And almost all of the environments are done using 3D techniques. But then we've integrated 2D characters and other elements into it to, to make you feel like they're all part of the same world. When you see Spirit running with his herd and they go up onto this bluff and the camera does this 360 degree camera move around Spirit, some of that is computer generated and seamlessly moves into James Baxter's animation. I really challenge people to be able to point out where that happens. In Spirit, the effects were very naturalistic. So, you know, there's a lot of organics, water, fire, dust. Yeah. So most of our work was creating natural phenomenon. Mist, snow, star twinkles. It just adds a little bit to the traditionally drawn animation. One of the dramatic high points of the film is the sequence we call Saving Rain. Both of the main characters are swept down river rapids while the characters in the sequence are hand-drawn traditionally, a lot of the environments and the effects are produced using digital techniques and then maybe integrated with additional 2D work as well. This is another traditionally drawn uh, effects animation of kind of like a splash from the top down, and that, that's actually what we use to get all this real soft-looking foam on the surface. And in order to kind of pull the audience into that, we took a, a cinematography style, which is very kind of live action. We used all digital sets so that we could get in there and, and move through them in a three-dimensional way and try to put the camera right down on the water like the whole thing was being shot by a raft that's floating down the river with them. So it's all has a kind of a handheld feel to it. It's all very dramatic. Being able to um, create effects that fit into some of these beautifully painted backgrounds and with some of this amazing animation, to just know all of the people that are crafting all of this and putting it together and how much thought goes into every scene, it, it's, it's quite awe-inspiring actually. Spirit presented other challenges to the filmmakers, such as realistically rendering the complex movements of a horse. Animating Spirit is the most difficult animation assignment ever given. There's nothing more difficult than to animate a horse. And, you know, we are very, very lucky here at DreamWorks that we have one of the greatest animators working today, James Baxter. It was quite daunting at the beginning because when I first started to draw horses, I suddenly realized how little I knew. So we went to experts, um, anatomy experts, anything that we could get our hands on to figure out 
what makes these animals work. This is a subject that has confused many, many people. There are pictures of Leonardo da Vinci struggling with this view himself. And it's a huge achievement to be able to show a horse gallop correctly because there's a lot of parts. Every frame and every cell in the animation has to be separately handled and there's a neck and there's a head and there's a flying mane and there's two ears and there's four legs. That's terribly complicated to control that from one frame to the next to the next. It's tough to do expression. So my job is not to force you to do a perfectly anatomically accurate horse. My point is to give you your point of departure so that you know just how far you can push it. So we had to design his face in such a way that it still felt like a horse, but it had elements to it that you could uh, convey emotion with, like eyebrows. I mean, real horses kind of don't have eyebrows. They have eye ridges, but not a big dark eyebrow like we have. It's a very useful device in animation, your eyebrows, to convey emotion. The single most overriding thing that is not just that the anatomy is technically correct, but what drives the animator's pencil is what's in the animator's heart. There is nothing that takes the place of what happens when an artist, an animator, gives life to a character with a pencil onto a piece of paper. There's nothing else like it in the world. It has so much emotion, so much personality. Computers can't do that, not yet. 